Uh, when I got it, it had front end damage. These are fun. Arigato. Arigato. So today I got my fake mic with me because I know. forgot the mics in the back of my car. So yes, sorry I about did. the audio. Have we showed this on the channel yet? We haven't. Welcome back to our Toys for the Boys channel. So you guys may have seen this in the background. 06 Duramax with an LBZ in it. It's got some modifications. Uh, and I first bought this thing, I bought it from Copart. So it's one of those Copart builds. Woo! <laughs> so when I bought it, this wheel was in the back of the truck. It was not attached. Actually, it's funny enough because it is the actual wheel because I know because it has a scratch on it because it's the same wheel still and I never replaced it. So when I got it, it had front end damage from here. Basically everything here was missing and the frame got pushed back about four inches. So we pulled the frame back. Redid all the suspension, put it back to factory, aligned it, made sure it drives straight, made it look like a truck again, because I can insert a picture here or a video. I don't know which one it is. All this was replaced with Chinese plastic, and I regret it now because everything is fading, it's a little loose. So if you're rebuilding cars, please go buy OEM stuff because Amazon stuff sucks. It lasted two, three years, but it's all faded now. You bought it on Amazon? The grill, the bumper, the headlights, everything's Amazon. Oh, interesting. I didn't have money when I first bought the truck. I guess. Buy nice stuff. Then, then you gotta do it twice, and it sucks doing stuff twice. So anyway, we made it work, stop, and then my turbo started being a little louder than it should be because it was going out, and it was kind of weird because this truck when I bought it had 99,000 miles, and it wouldn't. It had a weird whistle. I just thought it was louder than it should be, but it wasn't making enough boost. So we put a boost, boost, boost. So I went to AutoZone again, trying to be cheap. Bought a Turbo, but sorry. I can't oh say my that. gosh, you cannot say that. <laughs> so I went to AutoZone and bought an aftermarket turbo and put it in there. Then the truck sounded like Darth Vader. VGT veins in the back of the turbo kept going in and out and in and out every second. So it sounded like it was breathing. So that's just, crazy. It was like whistly and then gargly and whistly and gargly. Hey, whistling diesel? Yeah, whistling diesel. No, Can it? We, no we're not destroying this. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. I want to see the turbo. Or the turbos. Right is now. it just single? Is it single turbo? It's a single turbo. So let me get back to my story. After oh. I bought the aftermarket turbo, mm -hmm. I was dealing with all that and I got over it. Okay. And then I went to Wendell at AMT Diesel here in Escondido. And he made this thing amazing. You want to ask what we did, Kichi? What? We did everything. Cool. That we did help. big turbo. We did ARP head studs. We did EGR delete for the up pipe. Whole bunch of maintenance stuff like thermostats and coolant hoses and whole bunch of other good stuff but when i tell you i picked up this truck and towed my trailer up to monterey the next day after grabbing it and it worked amazing and i've never touched it since it's great i trust his work it, everything he did completely changed the truck changed the truck so i'd recommend doing big turbos to be honest this is probably my fifth or sixth truck that i've ever driven in my life um i had a silverado 1500 like 2017 ish Maybe 2016. Had that for like two years, maybe three. Uh, I have Tundra now of an F-150, and then I've, did I drive a Raptor? Yeah. I've driven a Raptor, not his, but this is probably the funnest truck that I've ever driven. It's a fast truck. It's a very fast it's a, truck. It, it's faster than most basic sports cars. Like you can race like 350Zs and whatever you want. Yeah. This thing will beat them and it's pretty weird. It's and, and it's crazy because when I, when my Aston went down a little bit, I was driving this, yeah. I was like, dang, this thing is fast. The next day I dropped it off to hit. Tow mode and you were, you were like, oh, like, it was like boost. no boost. Like, I was yeah. like, what? Like, low boost, whatever. Like, crazy. How much is the turbo on, like, in like, trucks like this? Money wise, yeah. I think this one was 3500 bucks. Are you comparing it to Aston? That's actually not bad. So, OEM to... turbo, OEM remanufactured turbo is 900 bucks. Yeah. And then that is like three grand. So, there's my turbo. See the thing that says Garrett? That's my turbo. Um, upgraded intercooler pipe. I got a different intake pipe here because the factory one wrapped around there if you guys know what it looks like because it had an intake heater and the EGR. So I got rid of all that because this car is an Arizona car. It is not in California and it doesn't stay here. Um, polar intake. I don't know if you can see my ARP head studs. I mean, you can, but I don't know how to show it to you. But there's not much to look at. It's not a pretty engine bay. I mean, it's my work truck. It tows everything and goes everywhere for me. It, it it's an expensive be. turbo, yes. Yeah, that's it, it's crazy. Pretty, they, they taxed me, but... See, it, I thought I thought it was like 1500 bucks, if that. That's so you could take of... your factory turbo and take it apart and just change the wheel 
So yeah. it'll help it respond faster, it'll spool up a little quicker, mm -hmm. but it, it still won't compare to actually getting a turbo that's machined and bored and, yeah, right. and actually ha moves more volume of air. That's crazy. So turbo, delete EGR, delete intake heater, all the fun stuff. So I tried to make it as bare bones as I can, so it's as re reliable as I can. I mean, the LBZ is already pr pretty reliable as they are but I just wanted to get rid of anything else that could potentially ruin the motor so I can have this motor go to two, three, four hundred thousand miles with no issues. It's currently at like 150 some, so I've put about like 50, 60,000 miles on it since I've gotten it. This is something that I've always wanted to ask. Sorry, oh. could you explain this okay. or those buttons? So we come here, what you did? we turn on this, see it's not lit, so we turn this on. So that all turns on. Oh, interesting. So if you hear back there, that's my air compressor. So, hold on. so this is a button to turn this on. Turn that on. Yes. Okay. That's air. I got an air compressor on here. It's got a five gallon tank mounted above my spare tire. So I still have my factory spare tire. Yes, it's smaller than the tires I'm currently running, but it's better to have a spare than to not. So, I mean, I can throw it up front. Worst case, if a tire blows out, so it'll be a little crooked, but I'd at least like to have something than not. Second one is danger. Danger is a power outlet that I put on my bed. Um, fan, it's not a fan. It's actually my water pump. I can show you guys that in the back. And then I got interior light and backup light, which are two lights that are mounted in the back of the truck for my camper shell. Can I hear, can I hear the car? I've been waiting for that for like 10, what? We've been recording for 10 and a half, 10 minutes so and a half. So I do have a three inch downpipe that goes to a five inch exhaust. Then I ran it with no muffler for a while, but I got droney on the highway, so I did add a muffler to it. But I think it sounds okay still. Sounds great. Wanna drive around here for a little bit so I can hear it? You're skipping all my other stuff. Are you, other oh, are we? Yeah. Oh, I'm just asking random questions that yeah, I want to. I want to know. Yes, we can drive it. Let me finish going over. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you guys wait. JD Fab coilover conversion. We don't have torsion bars. Kishi, what's a torsion bar? I have no clue. I was gonna ask. So, <laughs> originally, come here. Look down there. You see that square? Let me show you on my whiteboard <laughs> that I don't have. So there is a rod going into the lower control arm. It comes back here, and then there's a little thingy thingy, and there's a little bolt. So the bolt turns the thingy thingy, which turns the arm, and that's how my truck is raised. It's by torsion. That's why it's called a torsion bar. So you twist the bar, and the bar being twisted, it's what lifting my truck up. So I don't have springs on this car from the original. It's just a shock. Interesting. So there's there's no springs like a coilover or yeah. whatever. It's literally a piece of metal being twisted to twist the control arm down to bring the truck up. That's old technology. We don't like that. We like coilovers. So here we have all the parts that I'm replacing on my end. Um, we're doing a brand new redhead steering box because mine had a little, little bit too much play in it. We are doing the heavy duty D-Max axles that have the upgraded boots and the better CVs on them. It came with new nuts. So these are full replacement on that. And here I have new O-rings, new dust caps, and these are the O-rings for the steering box. So we are over here using the AGM. Oh, I just tapped that. A using the AGM brake pressure bleeder helping Harry over here at JD bleed my brakes that we just put on because we are here developing a new sus suspension kit. All right, so what do we got here, suspension? So originally the upper control arm had tabs here and it was mounted off the side of the frame. We cut those off, welded a plate here, and then brought the pickups or pivots for the upper control arm up to help clear and give you more room for the coilover that goes into here. And then we also did a lift spindle. So if you look over here, you can see the shiny piece of it. You probably can't. Mm -hmm. You can. It's okay. Yeah. So that's bolted onto the factory spindle to adjust for all the geometry and everything for the control I'm getting higher. So we welded in that, changed the upper, uh, added the spindle lift onto it, and then mounted the coilover into the factory, almost factory shock position on the bottom. So what that allowed us to do is basically put modern technology into this dinosaur of a truck. But we can adjust compression, we can adjust rebound, we can adjust spring rate, we can adjust all of that instead of just a big long rod being twisted and a little skinny shock. So that improved the ride greatly up front. Um, when I did that, if you want to look down here at my tie rods. Tie rods, it controls your steering. So we upgraded to what they like to call their trophy truck kit. So it changed all of this. It used to have an inner tie rod and outer with regular just ball joints and stuff, which are grease filled and have boots and fail. So we switched all of it to Himes to get rid of all the slop. So this helped my steering greatly. We also did a incognito double shear kit on my idler and pitman arm, upgraded sway bar bushings. The end links are upgraded to the 
heavy duty ones, which I believe was incognito as well. I don't remember exactly, but. Plus a redhead steering box and the PSC power steering pump completely changed how this car steers and handles. It actually tightened up the steering a lot and I can turn my wheel now at a stop because these trucks have a failing point, which is not failing point, it's a weak spot. So there's another truck here. If you want, we can go look at that one, the GM, other GMC. That one, you can turn the truck on. You can't turn the steering wheel if you're not moving just because the power steering pump doesn't have the power to turn oversized tires. Back here, stock leaf springs. I added um, air ride or air bags to the back just because I tow with this. Sorry, or bad lighting. <laughs> yeah. So in the back, factory leaf springs. I didn't do much here. All I did was add a air ride air bag in the back. So when I put my trailer, I can raise the back up. We have, as I mentioned earlier, onboard air and onboard water. These are cool. Those are old. I need to refresh the truck. It's been like two or three years since I did everything. So I need to go through it and refresh it. Like headlights, gauge. Oh, I forgot to show you my soccer field. Yeah, it's so cool. I'll sleep back here. So, so sick. I move my junk. <laughs> so back here, I went to Home Depot and just got some grass because- Grass? Literally, it's, astro it's just grass turf. Can you like make little people running here and play <laughs> soccer? I don't think so. So it's just nice to have grass because it's like this. If you didn't have this, it would roll everywhere. This, if I throw it right there, it's not going to go anywhere because the grass actually helps it from not rolling around. Because I just hate when you have shit in the back of your truck and you drive, you just hear it all slapping here and there and rolling around. So. Wait, oh, hold on. Hold I on. generally thought that, like, I thought you had this yeah. for like a camping purpose. Like it's, it's many purposes. It's more comfortable. If you go back here, Sandy, it absorbs all the sand. Right. It's another added layer of cushion. If you want to lay back here or sleep in here. But the main thing is just so shit doesn't slide around. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was going to say like you, I can, we can have like a sleeping bag and sleep together. Yeah. I Wait, can what? put in my lawn chair. Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> the turbo sounds so good. Sounds so fun. My gosh, these are fun. Oh my gosh. Drive it around, I wanna hear it. I did it with Pedro. I promised myself I wouldn't do it again. You wanna do a four-wheel drive launch? That's the thing? Yeah. I wanna see it. It's pretty gnarly. You Is gotta it? be inside it, it feels cool. Can we do it twice? Sure. Yeah. But yeah, seriously guys, that, my lips are so dry. Uh, that thing is so freaking fun. It's so fun to drive, honestly. I mean, I don't really know. Like, I just found out all these things that he has done to it. And I've driven this car three times now, but it is so fun. I love it. <laughs> Sounds nasty. Oh my gosh. Did you just hear that? Phew! <laughs> right. Sounds nasty, dude. Sounds really good. Let's go inside. I want to feel this thing. I actually have never built this car with like full like boost. No low boost. Four wheel drive. Don't do this, I don't recommend it. It's not good, but it's really fun. Is it? You're holding on that camera? Yeah, I'm holding a camera. It launches harder than your ass then. Actually? Oh! <laughs> Dude. Yeah, good thing I was holding, holding on to the camera. Oh, hey lady. You wanna hop in my diesel? This thing is so fun, bro. Oh my god. How? How? How are you drifting this thing? What? It's the best truck. What? Bro, that's crazy. I didn't think it was gonna drift this thing around. Ugh. It slides. Yeah. This truck, trucks all slide. Crazy. <laughs> It's so fun. It's way faster than it should be. Yeah, Maybe I agree. It shouldn't be this fast. I agree. But it's nice that it is, you know? So. 
trucks aren't meant to go this fast. No, not at all. So yeah. Break... What's faster, this corner, this one or Raptor? I feel like it was faster than the Raptor. Probably is. And I think it is. Yeah. Don't rev your diesel car. I learned that. How about... often do you change spark plugs in a diesel car, Kichi? There are no spark plugs. <laughs> learned it from this guy like three months ago. All right, well, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the, not really the build series, but what he has built. The completion series. Right. My truck summed up in 15 minutes. Questions, comments, recommendations, please leave in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. Yeah. I said that pretty smooth. That was pretty good. Nice. See you guys later.